Wilson Ross from Black Community TV talking to Corey Hardwick regarding his role in All American Homecoming. Corey, you always seem to be working. What went to saying yes to this project? Wow, what went to saying yes? It was it was NK, our creator. I had a meeting with her and she told me um, what she was doing with this All American Universe. And it was set in the backdrop of HBCUs. And then she unfolded this lovely character on me, Coach Marcus Turner. And it was so um, relatable to who I am in real life with my with my son, you know, and uh, I was just like, wow, this is so different for me. You know, I didn't have to, you know, wear, um, you know, um, like a uniform or be like a street person. I was just like, this is closer to who I am in real life. I'm all in. And um, I was like, wow, this is a great character to be a part of and show to be a part of. And um, that's what led me to it. So thank you. Now, from what we saw from the pilot episode, Mike, Marcus Turner was a coach who then became the head coach of the basket, the baseball team. And so what more is there to him and how do you relate to him? Well, I mean, I relate to him in, in many ways. Um, I would say the first the first way I relate to Coach Marcus Turner is, you know, he he cares. You know, he, he really, really cares about these kids at the school so they can just grow up to be grown, like to be good men in this world. Uh, it's bigger than sports with him. It's just more about life lessons and how they can go out and just make this world a better place. So um, that's that's who I am in real life with my son. And um, like I say, he's um, he's definitely not a perfect guy. You know, he's um, you know, he has a lot of issues as far as dealing with you know, him not being able to succeed going pro, you know, that's always been something in the back of his mind, like, you know, he didn't make it. So he's kind of just lived that dream through his kids, you know, so he's always, that's like a sensitive subject matter right there when we talk about his, um, you know, um, not making it to the pros. And, um, but yeah, he's, um, he, he's full of love, he's full of intensity. And um, he's, um, I always call this character. He's like, he reminds me of James Evans from Good Times. So you, you remember James Evans from Good Times, Wilson. So we need more characters like this on television. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Because this is a spinoff of All American, uh, does one need to watch the previous series in order to get this show? And did you watch the show before that? Yes, I watched it during the pandemic. Me and my son, we binge like, 12 episodes in a row because I was hearing all the hype people like all American all American and I really didn't really watch it before um that and then we binge watched one up we were watching one episode and that turned into like 12 and my son was like I love this show so and then I just saw it was this phenomenon um all over you know everyone's talking about all American so but yeah I would think you you should watch it because we come on right after just to kind of understand the world more but um, they're two separate shows you know I, I think they're different but um, they all you know it's you know it's, it's similar to they they mean like the same to the all-american world but they're just different shows and uh, they're you know they stand alone on their own you know on their own merits so um, that's what's cool as well but please support both because we come on right after <laughs> Now, as a as you know, you're playing a coach. Do you take stock into the characters you're playing? Like, do you know the sport of baseball? Have you played a sport of baseball? Did you learn the sport of baseball? Yes, I, baseball was my first love growing up. It was baseball, so I played baseball all the way until I was um, 16, 17, and then it just my love went to basketball. So I knew a lot about baseball. It wasn't like it was something new that you know uh, about the baseball world. Um, so it's kind of cool to also see baseball on television um, and colliding with the world of tennis, you, you know, because uh, you usually talk about like basketball and, and football. So, um, you know, um, baseball is, is is really great, you know, to just like reintroduce that this sport can be played through black athletes as well in this HBCU. And they also thrive in it as well. So that's kind of cool to see. That's interesting that you said that, because, you know, when you think of HBCU, you know, people think of basketball or any sport that's more popular, but this is centering around baseball and tennis, two sports that you don't really think of, you know, when people think of colleges and stuff like that. You know, uh, in regards to the show, how much of the HBCU experience are you going to get, you know, uh, displayed on TV? Like as far as a plot line, is it going to be a plot line that's kind of generic that anybody can get? Or is it going to be specifically generic? a specific plot line 
about the black experience in college? Uh, I don't think nothing Wilson about this show is going to be generic. I mean, our creator is too amazing for that. So you're going to get, like I said, the, the HBCU is the backdrop, but you're just going to get real life as well. The sports, everything is is authentic to its core, just showing all the struggles, too, that the HBCUs go through as far as on the financial side, how they don't get enough money, you know, to, to you know, they don't get more money. Of course, they, they're not a D1. They're not treated the same, but, you know, you have the athletic ability, capabilities, the, the capabilities that these students um, have are just as important as Division I um, athletes. But and you need to showcase that we we have minimal resources, but you, you're still getting, you know, um, stars here. And that's cool that now you're starting to showcase that now with with a lot of kids going to HBCUs from high school. Um, so it's shining more of a light on it. And, you know, once that happens, then more money gets supported through the schools and uh, more kids start going to HBCUs to show that you still can succeed in your sports going there. Um, so that's kind of cool as well. So um, no, nothing's generic about the show, man. <laughs> now you and one of the co-stars, Kelly Jennerette, have been around longer than most of the co-stars in terms of the work you've done for a number of years. You know, are you seen upon as like the the vet on the crew when you're working with them because you know you guys are all working together and i guess during this time it's not like you can go home and hang out whatever you kind of have to kind of stay isolated for a period of time while you're shooting scenes you know how's that chemistry working out with the rest of the cast um the chemistry is great on set like i say we're 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 like a big family on set when we see each other most of my storylines are with the students um uh, uh, Peyton Smith and, um, and Sylvester Powell. Most of my interactions are with them, uh, with, the, um, with uh, Kelly Jennerette. And um, sometimes we see, I see some of the other kids like through the trailers or going back and forth, coming in and out of scenes. Uh, but we're all pretty, pretty close uh, for the most part. And we're all, like I say, we all respect each other. We're all serious about this job. We all want to make this work. So everyone's really putting in the hard work, you know, um, on and off, you know, when, when, when they're there and I know they go home, they're studying because it's a schedule where you just gotta, you know, you're testing so much, you're working. So you have to always be, be locked in and it's, um, everyone's doing their part and doing a great job at that. So we're all pretty close. Besides the show, you also have a production company that you just started up. You got a couple of projects. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, um, my production company, um, Hardcore Films, I've been, it's been in the works for some years now. And um, when I finish All America Homecoming, I'm going, I'm going to some films. I'm trying to knock out two or three this year. Um, I have an Inglewood project, I have a Con Man project, and I have a Flint Six project that um, I'm going to fund. And uh, a few of them I'm going to be in as well, starring as well. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be movies that, that serves the community, you, you know, um, at its core, you know, it's all about culture for me. It's about giving, you know, our people opportunities uh, to be seen, to be heard. And uh, it's exciting to do movies that I always wanted to do that no one would give you the money to do. And, you know, I'm, I've been begging <laughs> to people read my scripts and all this stuff for years. And they're like, that's oh, great. But, you know, you know how it is, Wilson, you know. So now cool. I can really you know, um, get my ideas out there to the world in a big way. So I'm excited about that. You know, you can never stop learning as an actor, as a producer, as a director, you know, while you're working on All American. And is there anything, because you're, you're still doing episodes that you're learning through different directors and producers that you can take on that helps your skill set as an actor and as a producer, as you're starting to, you know, get your production company up and running? Um, say, say it again, Wilson, I'm sorry. Is, is there anything that you're learning as you're continuing to work on All American with different directors and producers that helps your skill set mm -hmm. as you're ready to get your production company off the ground? Yeah, I'm, every week, is you know, you learn something new from all the directors. I think I've learned the most so far from Michael Schultz, the, the, the great Michael Schultz, you know, um, what better person to learn from? You know, Cooley High, Car Wash, The Last Dragon. And like I said, he's still so in tune to the culture and what's going on today. And uh, just sitting back watching, you know, you know, just on his scene selections on, and just on everything. So I'm just absorbing it all. And just like, wow, one day, hopefully I can, you know, um, put up the films like this man, but I'm learning, I'm learning a lot every week. And it's always different. It's most of the time it's different directors. 
So it was a blessing to have him on twice so far. Um, um, but I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning and, and I definitely want to, um, you know, take what I learn and put that out there to the world in a great way. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, obviously, as American Homecoming is ready to come out next next week or so, or, or coming February up soon, 21st, February 21st, you know, what's going to get, you know, outside of you, but people know and seeing in other projects and a new cast and being at the follow up to All American, what else is there for the show that's going to entice people to see it? If you've never watched All American. I mean, especially, I mean, from my age range, you know, shows you grew up on like a different world, set in colleges, those were all classic shows. Um, and we're just coming right back around to those, you know, set in the college environment. And like I said, it's it's black excellence that it's at its finest. It's set in Atlanta, you know, HBCUs, you know, have been underserved, you know, far as on television or any type of uh, any type of world. Um, they, they get to just dive into that and just relive that experience of what they know. And um, the family dynamic and all the relationships in the, in the show is something that's just super real. It's on the page, it's just real life. And we need to see that. So if you just put all this in a big pot, you get all American homecoming. And um, I think it's, the work will speak for itself. And that's what's gonna keep the people tuned in every week. We'll bring in the, the new audience, some of the audience from all American and um, we'll grow it until it becomes a success, so. <laughs> Corey, it's always good to talk to you. You know, you stay working. People appreciate what you bring to the screen on and off, you know, big, you know, whether it's big or small, you know, just keep doing your thing. You know, I've always been there to support. And then- I just want to say to thank you, Wilson, man. You do a lot for the community, for black, brown faces, man. If it wasn't uh, no Wilson Morales, it wouldn't be no us, man. So I, I thank you, brother. You always held me down from day one and you're holding everybody down. So you need your flowers, brother. Thank you, Wilson. I just want to say appreciate that. Appreciate it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.